Today I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to plant onions in the middle of October. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. If you're a frequent viewer of our channel, it's always good to have you back. So we're down here in South Georgia in zone 8B, which means as far as onions go, we plant what you call short day varieties. I'll throw the map up on the screen there so you can see what type of onions are suitable for your state or your region. But down here we plant short day onions and we usually plant those in November. They'll grow throughout the winter. They'll start bulbing in February and then we'll harvest them in early spring. So if we normally plant in November, why in the world am I planting in the middle of October? Seems a little early, doesn't it? So like I said, I normally wouldn't plant onions this early. I normally wait till at least the beginning of November. But I've got this flat here of Savannah sweet onions that are ready to go in the ground. I don't need to leave them in this tray any longer. The reason these I started these so early was just to be able to show people on our show and our other videos what it looks like when you grow your own onion plants and how easy it is to do. But that being the case, I knew these guys were going to be ready a little earlier than I normally like to plant. I'm not going to plant all my onions today, just going to plant this one flat and then we got some leeks over there we'll talk about in just a second. But these guys are ready to go in the ground. Now since I'm planting these onions this early, a few things you would normally be concerned about. One, the temperature. If it's too hot, you know, these onions aren't going to do very well. The other thing is the day length. As far as the temperature goes, it's pretty cool out here this morning. I think we're done with 80 degree days, uh, seems like. Looks like all the temperatures in the next couple weeks are in the mid to high 70s. So temperature shouldn't be an issue but the day length could be an issue. Now these short day onions, like we grow here in the south, we usually start bulbing when the day length reaches 11 or 12 hours or so. And onions have kind of two phases. They have the vegetative phase where they grow all this foliage or all this top, the green part here, and then the bulbing stage. So usually when the days are short, they're growing all this vegetative stuff. And as the days get longer, in the beginning of the year that's when they'll start the bulbing stage the days are still relatively long for these short day onions you know it's getting light here at 7 30 getting dark around 7 or 7 30 so i'm kind of in the bulbing range of day length but i hope when i plant these guys they don't just start bulbing hopefully they'll start growing vegetation and as the day length shortens they'll keep growing vegetation and they won't bulb until February. I don't know for sure what's going to happen, but it's worth a try just to plant this one flat and see what's going to happen. And the other thing we're going to plant that I'm not worried about at all are these leeks here. So this is a variety called Mateco. And these leeks are supposed to be leeks that do really well in the fall. This is a hybrid kind of specialized leek variety and I've got two flats of them. And these guys are ready to go in the ground as well. Got some nice root structure there. And as far as leeks go, they're not day length sensitive like onions. So we can plant these guys anytime now, all throughout, you know, November, December, January, and probably even into February, and they would do just fine. So I'm just gonna be succession planting leeks all throughout these fall and winter months. I've got these plants here that are ready to go in the ground now. I've got more started in the greenhouse that are a few weeks away. And I've got some that I just seeded. So we're gonna be just plugging leeks in the ground every few weeks so we can kind of have them. We can stagger their maturity and have leeks all throughout these cool months. And if you've never tried leeks, they're absolutely delicious they're really easy to grow in these trays here and uh, they're just fun to grow now let's talk about where we're going to be planting these leeks and onions and all the rest of our alliums as it gets into november so this big plot right here i'm going to plant all alliums in here i'm going to stack them in here thick this is a plot 
where I had a sorghum sedan grass cover crop planted and you can see that right there I've just mowed it and this stuff is amazing how it just keeps growing back after you keep mowing it this I mowed this a couple days ago and this was the third time I've mowed it I wait till it gets up about uh, two foot tall or so two to three foot tall and I come here with my little push mower with the mulching kit and mow it and then I leave all those grass clippings on the ground and it just keeps growing back we can see here you can see those grass clippings down there that are just going to feed that soil you can see some of these here you can see the green on them there they're starting to grow back already and so my plan here is to not cultivate or get this area ready at one time i'm going to be i can't plant all these onions or garlic or shallots or leeks in one day so i'll just plant a few rows every week up through November and I'll just till up a little bit at the time I'll let this stuff keep growing and keep just doing wonderful things for the soil and I'll just keep mowing it until we get all the way to the end so this is the spot here I tilled up yesterday for these two or three rows I'm not sure how many rows I'm gonna get two or three and you can see where this sorghum sedan grass was. It's just made some beautiful, beautiful soil. It's just really well conditioned. This spot here actually tends to be pretty hard because there's some clay in it from when a berm was built back in the day. Well, that sorghum sedan grass, man, it just does great, great things for the soil. Nice and workable here and uh, should be really good stuff for the onions so we put some of our chicken manure compost down there before we tilled it so we'll plant those few rows right here today and then the next couple weeks when we have some more plants get ready we'll till up this right here we'll plant that and then we'll just work our way on down the line now before we plant these couple rows of onions and leeks we need to lay our drip tape and a little tip if you know you're going to be laying drip tape come out here the day before and if you haven't already get your main line go ahead and lay it out that main line is coiled up in that packaging and can have a little bit of memory to it it want to twist on you a little bit if you come out here the day before and lay it out let it sit in the sun a little bit it will do what I call de-memorize I don't know if that's actually a word or not but uh, it is today so that memory will kind of work itself out of that main line and then it will lay straight for you and it's a lot easier to work with when you do go to set up that drip tape we're going to put our drip tape lines two feet apart two foot rows is my standard spacing on any kind of alley and whether it be onions leeks elephant garlic shallots whatever these things don't take a lot of room we can really stack them in the garden and maximize our garden space grow as much food as we can in the space that we have and then once we lay those drip tape lines we're going to actually plant double rows we can get two rows of crop per one line of tape and that goes back to the theme of maximizing our garden space getting the most bang for our buck out of our drip tape lines so i'm going to go ahead and lay this tape it won't take me just a minute and then we'll plant some onions and leeks All right, so we've got our drip tape hooked up. It's buried, so our drip line is right here. And you can see that drip tape layer with those plows makes these two little perfect mini furrows right here on both sides of that buried drip tape. And that's where we're gonna put our onions. So we do a double row, we do a row here, a row here, we've got our drip in the middle. This drip is gonna feed both of these rows here on each side of the tape. 
Now you saw our previous fall planting videos. You saw where we want to plant. If we're doing like collards or broccoli, we turn the drip tape on, we plant on top of each emitter on a 12 foot, or excuse me, a 12 inch spacing. With these onions, we're putting them a lot closer together so we don't really have to worry about where those emitters are. We're just gonna stack them along here, along these mini furrows, and these emitters will put out plenty enough water to feed the onions on both sides, no matter where they are in relation to the emitters. So I'm gonna put these onion plants about four to six inches apart. They're not gonna be super exact about this, but about four to six inches apart. And what we'll do is when these things get bigger in the spring is we'll come in here and we'll thin every other one. We'll pull every other one when they get about a quarter size as green onions. And then we'll leave the rest in the ground to get nice big softball size. So we just grab them out of our tray here stick them down in that mini furrow. And you don't have to be really careful when you're planting onions. You can throw one of these onion plants on the ground right there and you'd be surprised it will take root and start growing. So we don't have to be really careful with them. We just wanna make sure we get them in the ground good. Tiger, leave them onions alone. Leave him alone. I just work hard to plant all them. Get out of there. All right, all right, all right. So we got that 40 foot row of Savannah sweet onions planted there. Almost used our whole flat here. So this tray is a 288 tray, which is has a few more cells than our 162 tray and I almost used the whole thing might have to give these last few to Miss Hoss so she can plant in one of her raised beds But these plants look really really good. I'm super happy with how they turned out and uh, I don't expect Hardly any transplant shock these things should take off and start growing pretty fast pretty soon with onion transplants unlike say something like collards or broccoli where you want to keep that soil block there intact with these guys if a little bit of this dirt shakes off when you pull them out of the trays it's not a big concern because when you buy onion plants from the store it's just roots anyway so we don't have to be near as careful with these as we do some of the other transplants and that right tiger now with our leeks here, we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did with the onions. We've got our two little mini furrows there down that row. Now the leeks, I did grow these in a 162 tray. You could grow them in a 288 or a smaller cell tray as well, but they grew out pretty good in this 162 tray. So we're gonna put those along that row there. We're gonna put them about four inches apart and we won't have to thin the leeks. Leeks don't get the bulbs don't get as big as onions. So we can put them in there four inches apart and they'll be just fine. Stack them in there thick and they'll grow just fine like that with that drip tape feeding them in the middle there. All right, so our leeks are down. We got this 40 foot row of these Mateco leeks planted there. Nice and pretty. I got me some labels here at the beginning of the row so I can remember what these guys are because I'll be planting several different varieties of onions and a couple different varieties of leeks. For this 40 foot row here, I used almost two flats of these 162 cell trays. So we'll use that whole one. And then we've got a few plants left here. Like I said, we'll probably give those to Miss Hoss. She's always on my case about not spreading the wealth with the plants. So she'll be happy that we had some left over. Give those to her to plant in her raised bed and be good to go. So nice to get two rows of alliums planted in the garden. 
Still got a long way to go. Still got all that space there to put some more alliums in. We'll just do a few a week and we'll eventually get there. Now alliums like these onions and leeks we planted today are heavy feeders, which means they need plenty of water and plenty of fertilizer, especially nitrogen once they get up and growing. Now, I've got this drip tape in the middle and that's gonna let me give them plenty of water throughout their lifetime. I probably won't turn the drip on right now because that soil is still a little moist from, we got an inch or so of rain a few days ago and we got a tropical storm coming in this weekend that's gonna give them plenty of rain. That's one reason why I wanted to go ahead and get them planted. That'll give them plenty of water to get them up and going. So I'm not gonna turn the drip on right now, but we'll definitely be using it a lot as these things grow. And as far as fertilizer goes, once these things root in the ground good and I can tell they're starting to grow, I'm gonna shoot some 20-20-20 through that drip tape there give them some potassium and some phosphorus to encourage root development. And then after that, probably a few weeks after that, I'll start with just some nitrogen. Go in there with some ammonium sulfate, give them a little sulfur, they like that. And uh, that ammonium sulfate has plenty of nitrogen. We can side dress that or we can inject it. We'll probably do a little bit of both, but we wanna feed them, uh, I'd say at least every two or three weeks throughout their lifetime. We wanna maximize the vegetation we can get during that vegetative phase. So when that bulbing phase starts or that payoff phase starts, we get a nice big softball sized bulb on the onions or a nice big, you know, ping pong ball size bulb on those leeks. So in the comments below, let me know what kind of onions or what varieties of onions, leeks, garlic shallots you're planting this year we're planting three varieties of onions this savannah sweet we got in the ground today another variety called sweet harvest and then one of our favorites the texas legend as far as the leeks go we've got this mateco variety and then another variety called tadorna so let me know what's your favorite onion or leek varieties and what you're planning on putting in your garden this year i'll put some links below to all these varieties, our seed trays, and any of the other tools used in this video. So you can check those out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and we'll see you guys on the next one.